Good morning and welcome to On Air this morning. I'm Ben. I'm Micah. Happy Friday! Yes, we made it to Friday. Yes, it's Friday. It's been a weird week, hasn't it? It's been such a long week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's been some good I'm things so... in the week and there's been some weird it's things right. in no, the week. Yeah, nothing nothing bad. Just right, yeah. It's been a long week and yes. I'm We're happy to be like at the end of it at the moment, right? <laughs> yes, and you know, I I still, well, I still have a lot of homework. I got to do oh, so have a lot of homework. I'm not done yet. Oh, they're not done yet. Yeah. I'm done. Just kidding. <laughs> One of us is in school and one of us isn't. <laughs> one of us not. One I'm done with my soccer season, so I have a little That's bit more true. free time. That is exciting. Time, so yes. Good and bad. Yeah, yeah. Good and bad with that, but um, have a little bit more free time now, so that's good. Yep. So they were having an interesting conversation last night. Indeed, we were. Um, Never a dull our, moment in our home. The, in our home, and had some sketchy. I was actually on the edge of the conversation, just kind of hearing it, and didn't get to really have a chance to participate. In the conversation, so I thought maybe to extend it to this morning, and, and it's this question of what organs could we live without? And I was like, hmm, interesting, interesting question. We know we know we can't live without a heart. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. your your we, heart. We need at least one bad. lung, right? Yes. Can we live with just one lung? You can live with just one lung. Yes. So. You, which I mean, I I don't know what impact that has on you. Like if it's going to affect you. Yourself, we're we're not like, saying yeah. We're yeah, not saying I, quality of life is like great. Right. With these things, but, but you can you live. Can yeah. We can so, live. So maybe you're someone that'd like to comment this morning and say what organ you can live without based on or, your own experience. You, yeah, or, you say, even more fun. Let us know what organ you are living without. <laughs> You could for do for that. those of you who are, are not aware, uh, the reason that this conversation has come about recently is my father uh, had surgery on Monday mm -hmm. to remove his entire stomach, mm -hmm. uh, which for many of us we were that not sounds weird. Yeah, yeah. We, we were not aware that that possible. was. Uh, yeah, we we didn't know that that was a thing that you could do uh, prior right. to about six weeks ago. So. Dad, if you're watching, glad you're doing well. Yeah, and you can't live without it. Yep, he, he's, he's going to. He's, yeah, he's doing, yeah, he's doing going well, to. but I still say it's weird. And then uh, they also took something else out. They're like, hey, if you're taking that out, well, right, take I think, something else. I think gallbladder is yeah. going to. Just like, cause, you okay, know, if you don't have your stomach, you don't right. have your gallbladder. Yeah. So, uh, like, which then add to the list of non-central organs. Non-central um, organs. So obviously your, let's see, so other things, your, your appendix. That, yeah, appendix. That really yeah, only Elijah explodes. Out, so, yeah. yeah. I always think that mine's out, but it's not. No, it was something else. Yeah, no. I swear. So you got that. You got uh, kidney. Yep. You can live without a kidney. You you can live without one, and actually, from what I've read, you can live without both. You just have to do dialysis regularly. Which, so again, quality of life, like not sure if yeah. that's necessarily yeah, ideal. My aunt had that. Yeah, she did. Right. Um, yeah. I think spleen uh, was something else I read. Spleen. Thyroid. Um, yeah. I, there, I'm sure there's many others. We we would oh there you go hey, Jen Jen just commented thyroid thank you uh, yeah. so so yeah if you have other thoughts let us know but this has been a fascinating growing a learning experience for for me over the course of the last few weeks and months. Tonsils tonsil, tonsils organs. I don't even know what a tonsil is, man. It's, it's back. But throat. all right, Jen, if, if a tonsil is not essential, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> And, it has uh, something to do with your, I don't know. I don't know. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and move on to scripture. We, we, we can, we can live without an eye. I guess we could live without well, an yeah. eye. Obviously, we can't. Like, you don't have to see. She She's just going to keep commenting. Yeah, we can speak more authoritatively <laughs> on scripture. We will let Jen deal with Anyone else that would like to comment yeah, and, and, like, weigh in on that? <laughs> always open to thoughts. But... Let me go ahead and open with a word of prayer, and then Michael will just let you Acts 13. In. Acts 13. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning and the time together, uh, and just the, the time for Micah and I to, to goof around, yes, but more importantly, the, the time for us to dive into your word uh, and to, to just spend time with you. So, Lord, we pray that you'll come and be present with us wherever we're at today, uh, and we pray that you'll give us ears to hear the message that you have for us as we dive into your word and pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Acts 13. Verse 1. Among the prophets and teachers of the church at Antioch of Syria were Barnabas, Simeon, called the black man, Lucius, from Cyrene, Menean, the childhood companion of King Herod Antipas, and Saul. 
One day as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Appoint Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. So after more fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. So Barnabas and Saul were sent out by the Holy Spirit. They went down to the seaport of Seleucia and then sailed for the island of Cyprus. There in the town of Salamis, they went to the Jewish synagogues and preached the word of God. John Mark went with them as their assistant. Afterward, they traveled from town to town across the entire island until finally they reached Paphos, which is like 100 miles away, Oof. where they met a Jewish sorcerer, a false prophet named Bar Jesus. He had attached himself to the governor, Sergius Paulus, who was an intelligent man. The governor invited Barnabas and Saul to visit him, for he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the sorcerer, as his name means in Greek, interfered and urged the governor to pay no attention to what Barnabas and Saul said. He was trying to keep the governor from believing. Saul also, known as Paul, was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he looked the sorcerer in the eye. I would like to have seen this. Then he said... You, son of the devil, full of every sort of deceit and fraud, an enemy of all that is good, will you never stop perverting the true ways of the Lord? Watch now, for the Lord has laid his hand of punishment upon you, and you will be struck blind. You will not see the sunlight for some time. Instantly, mist and darkness came over the man's eyes, and he began groping around, begging for someone to take his hand and lead him. When the governor saw what had happened, he became a believer. For he was astonished at the teaching about the Lord. Would have liked to have seen it. Definitely don't want to be on the receiving oh, end no, of no, that no. conversation. Okay, you wouldn't be the one. Woo, no. Woo, no. All right, verse 13. Now Paul and his companions set sail from Paphos and came to Persia in Pamphylia. And John left them and returned to Jerusalem. But they went on from Persia and came to Antioch in Pisida, Pis Pisidia. There we go. Mm. And on the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down. After reading the law, the after reading from the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent a message to them, saying, "Brothers, if you have any word of encouragement for the people, say it." So Paul stood up and, motioning with his hands, said, "Men of Israel, and you who fear God, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our fathers and made the people great during their stay in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arms, He led them out of it." And for about 40 years he put up with them in the wilderness. And after destroying seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance. All this took about 450 years. And after that he gave them judges until Samuel the prophet. Then they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man from the tribe of Benjamin for 40 years. And when he'd removed him, he raised up David to be their king of whom he testifies uh, and said, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. Of this man's offspring, God had brought to Israel a savior, Jesus, as he promised. Before his coming, John had proclaimed a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his course, he said, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. No, but behold, after me one is coming, the sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to untie. Brothers, you sons of Abraham, and also you God-fearing Gentiles, this message of salvation has been sent to us. The people in Jerusalem and their leaders did not recognize Jesus as the one of the prophets had spoken about. Instead, they condemned him. And in doing this, they fulfilled the prophet's words that are read every Sabbath. They found no legal reason to execute him, but they asked Pilate to have him killed anyway. When they had done all that the prophecies had said about him, they took him down from the cross and placed him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And over a period of many days, he appeared to those who had gone from him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now his witnesses to the people of Israel. And now we are here to bring you this good news. The promise was made to our ancestors, and God has now fulfilled it for us. Then descendants, their descendants, by raising Jesus, um, this is what the second psalm says about Jesus. You are my son. Today I have become your father. For God had promised to raise him from the dead, not leaving him to rot in the grave. He said, I will give you the sacred blessings I promised to David. Another psalm explains it more fully. You will not allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. This is not a reference to David, for after David had done the will of God in his own generation, he died and was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. No, it was a reference to someone else, someone whom God raised 
and God and whose body did not decay. Brothers, listen. We are here to proclaim that through this man, Jesus, there is forgiveness for your sins. Everyone who believes in him is made right in God's sight, something the law of Moses could never do. Be careful. Don't let the prophet's words apply to you, for they said, Look, you mockers, be amazed and die. For I am doing something in your own day, something you wouldn't believe, even if someone told you about it. As they went out, the people begged that these things might be told them the, the next Sabbath. And after, meeting, after the meeting of the synagogue broke up, many Jews and devout uh, converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who, as they spoke with them, urged them to continue in the grace of God. The next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and began to contradict what was spoken by Paul, reviling him. And Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken first to you, since you thrust it aside and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life. Behold, we are turning to the Gentiles. For so the, the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have made you a light to the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of God. And as many as were appointed to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was spreading throughout the whole region. But the Jews incited the devout women of high standing and the leading men of the district stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and drove them out of their district. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. A lot going on there. Long chapter. Mm-hmm. Um, what I love, I'll, I'll say real quick, is that their, this missionary journey, this um, task, came out of prayer. Yeah. Um, in those first verses, and they, they, yeah, they just say once again that they're like, they were praying. Yep, and, and and part of me was just like, uh, man, thinking once again, how many things do we do in the church that come out of prayer? That come out of, um, or maybe in our life, how much how much do we do? How much do we do things that come out of prayer? Like we just feel like God's leading, God's doing those things. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ooh, I was just thinking that right then as we read that. Once again, um, question. I don't know. That's something we need to think about. Something we need to look to. We maybe we just assume. Right. Maybe that's happening, and, and we just have our things we're doing, but maybe we need to be praying more and doing more based on what's coming out of the, right. the prayer, things that we feel led to we do. need to lead with prayer, especially mm-hmm. in a church context. Yeah. So that's the first thing that kind of came to mind that was ooh, a little convicting this morning. I have to admit, and it's something to think about. Think about that yourself as far as prayer, and maybe when it comes to your own life and you know, is prayer leading you into the things that you feel called to do and mm-hmm. what you feel um, God is calling you to do? Is prayer yeah. leading that or are you just doing it and yeah. hoping it's the right things and wondering why it isn't the right things? And yeah, yeah, because um, we need to have prayer leading it. Yep. Um, that was my first thought. I don't know if you want to add on that. My, my second thought was they didn't force themselves in the synagogue here where they had... They've been speaking all over, and they get in the synagogue where they're like, okay, we want to have our place. Mm-hmm. They could have kind of forced themselves and said, hey, we have this audience, but they didn't. They didn't force themselves. They, they, There's verse 15 there. They waited, and they came to them and like, hey, after everything was done, do you want to yeah. speak? Because yeah. they, they knew what their message was, and it wasn't <laughs> yeah. necessarily the same message as being spoken in the synagogue. They asked them to speak, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, whoa, that is pretty neat that they would come to them and that they waited patiently for that. They didn't force themselves. They just waited for the opportunity to come and they were able to speak God's word. Um, And the people were much more willing to listen. Like, you know, yeah, like there was a receptiveness because right. Because sometimes we want to force our message of the gospel on people and they're not ready to hear it. Mm hmm. Where if we're living our life and doing those things we're, we're supposed to be doing, spreading the message um, through our words and, and, and things we're doing, people will ask us mm-hmm. about our message. And that's the time they're going to be most willing to hear right. is when they ask us. And we've got to be ready to share. Yeah. I need to be ready to share when someone's, and if no one's asking me about my message, I need to be maybe living differently so they will right. ask me 
yeah. about my message. Now, a little caveat: and, and I don't I, don't want anybody to to use this as an excuse to not share because nobody's asking. I don't think that's no, no. The, the point of this either. But yeah, yeah, yeah it's, we need to be praying more, and we need to be living our lives in a way that people will ask us about yeah. our faith, and so we can share. Um, that was just one of those opportunities that they were waiting to be asked because they were in that context. There's mm-hmm. other contexts they right. probably could have just said it. Yeah, every, every situation is a little different and hard to to paint evangelism with one broad stroke right. of how but it should just go. definitely but, made me think they were they were willing to listen. When someone yeah. asks you, be ready. Like yes. <laughs> like they're ready to listen. Yeah. Yeah. And when that happens, sometimes it's going to go really well. There are some people that were very receptive to that message and oh, yeah. very much enjoyed it. But not always gonna gonna work out and not everybody's gonna say yes. So not much so says yes. I, well <laughs> the the chapter ends with them getting run out of town. So, oh, oh yeah. Is that the same for us? Does everybody listen to you when you? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and whenever I'm speaking, everybody is absolutely tuned in and 100 percent agrees with everything that I. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I do appreciate about this, though, is when their message wasn't received well and and when they got ran ran out of town verse 51 says but they shook off the dust from their feet against them and they moved on Mm -hmm. and they 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 left and that was okay Mm -hmm. and i think for me if if i was run out of town let's say that i was run out of delphi oh yeah i think i would take that really really personally yeah, I think that would be really, really tough. For I can me. see that. Like, and and there's a difference between getting run out of town because I screwed up versus because people just are not receptive to. to they, don't like the message. Message. Yeah, yeah. they don't like the message. Yeah, they don't like the message. Yeah. Share. So so like if if I got run out of town because people didn't like the gospel, like I think I would take that really personally. Mm-hmm. And yet, Paul and Barnabas know the truth that. It's not the two of them that are being rejected. Right. It's that people are, are rejecting the message that, that God was giving giving them through the two of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I just I think when when we witness to people, um, there are going to be some successes, but there are also going to be a lot of failures along mm-hmm. the way. Mm-hmm. Um, and don't let those failures be an excuse for you to, to stop trying because, I mean, again, they just they shook it off. They... They rested assured that they had done their job. They had done what God had called them to do, and they they moved on and they tried somewhere else, and that's okay um, because not everyone is going to be receptive to to the gospel. Right, and it's a reminder for even me. I know I'm more of a people person, and when I, when someone rejects something like the gospel, sometimes I easily translate that and say, "Hey, they're rejecting me." Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's, this is a great example here. They're like, hey, it's not, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the message yeah. that God sent you to talk about. And I can't take it personal. And, and the less I take it personal that they're rejecting not me, they're rejecting God's God. word, God himself, who's trying to speak to them, then I can more easily move on and say, okay, next time I'll yeah. share again. And I got to be ready. And the next person may be ready to receive and hear and and there was many that had received it was just right. those few that actually became jealous yeah the ones that became jealous were the ones that yep. didn't want to hear it we don't have that happen in the church right no. as we're as we're Never. having good things happen we why don't would have... you even ask that oh <laughs> i don't know we do don't we i yeah. you know i see someone else doing we good do. things sometimes and i get we jealous do. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, whether it's another church, another ministry, and it, it, it just naturally hits yeah. there. And I, I and I can, I can see where that would happen. But at the same time, I'm like, wow, I could be the one interfering from someone, you know, actually the message spreading and mm-hmm. the message actually doing what it, just because of my own jealousy or not be able to jump on board with the good thing that is happening. Right. And, and we as Christians, we're sometimes we need to jump on the board of the good thing that is happening mm-hmm. and find the way that we can help and not hinder and get in the way. Yep. Um, I mean, those are all, man, a lot of good things in this chapter. I mean, yeah. There's so many. Maybe there's something you want to point out. Um, 
that or a question that you have that came up from mm -hmm. what we just shared and talked about. The Holy Spirit's talked about tons again in this chapter. We didn't even yeah. touch on that. I don't know about how we can go through a chapter and not talk about the Holy Spirit. It's the entire book, it, man. It's the entire book. That's the theme of the entire book. Um, if there's still a question you have about that, shoot it out to us, message or text. We'd love to answer that. And what would you wrap up with? Anything? No, that's that's all I got. It's it's a pretty intense chapter, but yeah. But as always, we're glad you joined us. We mm -hmm. appreciate you taking some time to be with us this morning. So we will be back first thing on Monday morning. Mm -hmm. We'll see you then. Have a good weekend. X14. <laughs>